Come on, stand on your feet and give them a little hand clap for free this morning. Come on, don't panic. Give him really give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. For he is worthy of all the glory. He is worthy of all the honor. He is the one who woke us up this morning. He's the one that started us on our way. He's the one that gave us activity of our lives. He's the one that allowed us to come into this sanctuary. That we may give him glory. That we may give him honor. That we may give him praise.
say, well, Pastor, you, you up there singing and the musicians are playing and you're doing it all by yourself. But guess what? I told the Lord, if I got to praise you by myself, I praise you. If I got to sing by myself, just give me a vocals to sing over. Whatever I got to do to bless you, I will bless the Lord. Even while David was going through his own trials, troubles, and tribulations, he still had a praise in his mouth. Yeah. And I don't know who's going through, I don't know what you're going through, but I do know who's going through it with you. Yeah. God says, I'll never be. No one can say it. Anybody can testify to that. My family may have left me, my friends may have left me, but I got God that will never be. Bible 
conclude by saying Romans 16, 16, it says salute one another with the holy kiss. The church of Christ salutes you. Here at Mount Moriah, even though we're in the midst of this Omicron virus and, and pandemic, we're lifting up our right hand. We're shaving it and looking and, and waving it all across the land, letting everybody know Jesus loves them, and so do you and I. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High God at this time as we lift up another voice of song unto your heart.
Thank you.
finances are not where they need to be. My child's keep ready to graduate. I'm just telling down somebody, bro, I don't know who I'm talking to. But no, I can't even afford the college tuition. But Lord, I know that you are with me. I know that you are promised. I know that you can make a way out of it. I've seen you do it before. Prove me. Prove me. Try me. 
Proof is another way of saying try me. You know how people will say it in the street. I double dare you to try me. God said, try me. Try me and watch me do what I said I would. I'm not like man, says the Lord. I can't lie. I have to stand on my word because when heaven and earth pass away, my word will stand forever. Amen. He said, man may lie to you, but he said, I can't, I can't, I can't. Because I am the truth. And I am the light. And no man coming to the Father except by me. Except for by me. He says, I, I did what they did. Try me, try me. Just try me. Just try me. Don't try me, try him. Don't try me, try him. they escape 
not who refused him that spake on the earth, much more shall not we expect. If we turn away from him that what? Speaketh from heaven. Verse 26 says this, whose voice then did what? It shook the earth. But now, somebody say, but now. But now. But now he has promised, saying, yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 27 says this, and this word, ye once more, what? Signify the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may do what? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High God. I'm going to read it to you from the Amplified version quickly. The Amplified says this. It says, see to it that you do not refuse to listen to him who's speaking to you now. All right, all right. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For if those sons of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to him, who warned them on earth, revealing God's will, how much less will we escape if we turn our backs on him who warns us from him? His voice shook the earth at Mount Sinai. Then, but now, he has given a promise saying, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the strays from heaven. You, you missed what I just said, it's so powerful. Now with this expression, yet once more, indicates the removal and final transformation of all those things which can be shaken. That is, of that which has been created so that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. I want to talk to you from this subject matter. Um, the right starting point. The right starting point. The right starting point. I want to give you a subtopic of this and write this down. God is shaking things up. God is shaking things up. My brothers and my sisters, um, I want to share with you this. We live in a world where every person, everybody, young and old, all want to voice their opinion. Amen. See how it together. We live in a world where everybody thinks they know everything. We live in this world today, in this 21st century, where everybody vocalizes their opinion and talk about what they think. This is what I think. You see it all over social media, all over, all over Facebook, all over YouTube, all over TikTok. I think this, or I think that, and if I was, I'll do this, and I'll do that. We, we, we always want to vocalize our opinions. When you turn on the news, you hear it on CNN, Fox, NBC, and all the other network stations. You hear people say things like, I think, I feel, I don't do, or I will not do this or do that. We live in a world of humanistic opinions. And they're always, and, and see, maybe you can't say amen because maybe that's you. Maybe you're the one that's always giving your opinion and not facts. All right, all right. Maybe you're the one that's on Facebook that's always saying, I think or I feel. You remember when, uh, uh, when Chris Rock got slapped on national TV? Everybody had their own opinion. Amen. I feel if that was me, I think if that was me, but it wasn't you. 
It didn't happen to you. And even if it did, you don't know how you would have responded. Amen. You can sit there giving your vocal opinion that absolutely means nothing. Somebody should have said amen. amen. So we, we, we live in a, in, a, in a world where humans always want to give their opinion. They, they always are trying to make sense of chaos. If this is happening in Ukraine, so uh, I feel we should be doing this over there. And I think we should be doing this over there. And the baby formula is all the way over there on the border and not on the shelves. And if I was president, I would do. No, you would. Because the president don't get to make all the decisions by himself. Regardless if he's Democrat, Republican, Independent, he's always got a crowd of folks helping to make decisions for you. See how quiet you got? Some of you have said, Pastor, I don't, I, don't, I don't try to figure out the world's chaos or the world's problem because I got problems of my own. But in your problems, you're always trying to think about what to do. All right, all right. Maybe you're always right. trying to feel how you should go through this. And some of us are in the situations we're in because of our thinking and our feeling. All right. Y'all are going to help me preach. So today, my brothers and sisters, today, I, I'm sad. I'm sad in my spirit and my heart. I'm sad because I see people, Christian folks, today, that have more faith in social media than they do the word of God. I, I just need a few Christians to say push back. It's me that I, I see more Christians digging into Facebook and TikTok and, 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 and Instagram and all those, but they're not digging into the word of God. They're spending all day and all time scrolling. <laughs> Finding something that will tantalize your emotions. But why don't you go to the word and find something that will help you to walk a better walk with Christ? See, I got a five o'clock there. It's a little more, get better, get better. But today it's asking me because Christians, not just people, but Christians are spending more time on social media and less time in the word of God. We look at others' opinions of life and listen to them, the creations, but we don't listen to the creator of life. It seems that Christians have more faith in politics than in the power of scripture. We want to voice our opinion, whether you're Democrat, Republican, Independent, or whatever, uh, whatever stance you with, you have more faith in what they're saying on Fox or on CNN than you do in what God says in his W-O-R-D. Because they're only giving their opinions. They, they, they call themselves antelists who are always trying to analyze a situation to try to find something to what? To help engage you, to keep you interested in what they're talking about. Got two amens. But the Bible says, the Bible says, give me Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. It seems that, that, that we tend to have more faith in politics than the power of scripture. We seem to put more trust in things that are seen by nature and natural eyes versus trusting in the unseen of the Spirit of God. And isn't that funny that we, we trust our eyes more than we trust our spirit? Whatever we see, we think it's more faith in that than what we don't see. When the Bible makes it clear in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 18, look what the Bible says. While we look not at the what? Things which are what? Same. Talk back to me. Which of the things are what? Same. But at the things which are not seen. And he's talking to Christians. He said, we need to be looking more at the things that are unseen and not so much at the things that are what? Right. Seen. For the things which are seen are what? Yeah. 
But the things which are not seen are what? Yeah. So you keep looking at things that keep fading away, trusting in things that are only temporal, but you won't trust in and think on and feel good about the things that God has to say from heaven. He says, but you can focus more on what they say than what he said. How do you know, Pastor? Because we've all been children. And our friends will say things that were not even adults that we will follow before we follow our parents. Amen. Amen. Say that. Say that. I know I wasn't the only one Amen. that had street cred. Amen. That had friends that thought they knew everything. You know, there's some friends that'll talk you out of going to college. Come on, man. Come on, man. And they ain't going themselves. Come on, man. Come on, man. How you gonna tell me that college is a ripoff and you ain't never been? Uh, since, since we do have uh, graduations coming up, and, and, and since so many of you are, are going by what people are saying and what they see versus what God, how many people are asking God, what do you want me to do? Come on, man. Come on. What do you want me to go? Why do you want me to go to this college or this community college or this school? Not because of what I want, not because of what my mama or my dad is trying to get me to live through through my life for them, but what I want to live through for God. Because many of us are only going to school because we're trying to live out our parents' life. See how quiet you Instead of asking God, what do you want me to do? Go. What do you want me to do? Not by the scene. So if I say not the scene, not the scene. but the unseen. Amen. See, this is what you have to understand. Whatever you start out wrong, right can't get in. All right. All right. If you start out only trusting in what you see or your five senses, you are already starting out wrong. Amen. If you start out, help me, Holy Ghost. If you start out your day, your life, your walk is wrong by seeing it, touching it, feeling it, smelling it, or hearing it, I'm telling you now, you're starting out wrong. Amen. Everything we need to do needs to start out by the Spirit of God that we can't see. Everything we do needs to start out by His voice instead of another voice. Well, let's go back to scripture because some of you got real quiet on it. Let's go back to the scripture in, in, in Hebrews chapter 12 and let's look at verse number 25. Can we walk it just a little bit and then we'll, I'll let you go. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12. Let's look at verse 25 and let's see what God is saying to us today that we need to make sure that our life is lined up with his word. The first thing that he says to us in his word is this. See that that you refuse not him that would speak. And he's not talking about me. He's talking about himself. Many people refuse to hear from God. We will hear everybody else, but we won't hear from God. And we refuse to hear from him. And we think that we can do life by our what? Self. He says, now, I'm giving you a warning. He said, the warning is, refuse not him that's speaking to you. And he didn't just say speak, but he said speak in. Which means that he's not just going to talk one time, he continues to talk. So he says, never refuse him that's speaking, for if they escape not who refused him uh, before who was on the earth. He said, remember those who were all religious but didn't have a relationship? The Sadducees and the Pharisees and them, he said they refused to listen. And what happened to them? He said, if you refuse to listen, the same thing can happen to you. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm glad you got it. He said, God, you're so loving and so kind. How can you be so hard? He says, I discipline those I love. Amen. Just like mama does, a mama did, or daddy did, or daddy does. When you get out of line and don't listen to what they have to say, don't you get punished? And what do they say at the end of the punishment? You know, I'm doing this for your... Yeah. 
God says, I'm doing this for your what? For your good. I don't want you to go through life not hearing me. Not paying attention to my word. Not paying attention to what I have to say. Because guess what? You can end up going down the highway, getting off on the wrong exit, and come to a dead end called life. He says, I don't want that to happen to you. I don't want you to be like those Israelites that had the wonderful 40 years and then some of them never made it in. Why? Because they wouldn't listen. All right, all right. They were so focused on what they were seeing. We're not getting mamma anymore. It seems like our sandals ought to be wore out by now. God don't care about us anymore. They were only faced off by, they were only disciplined by what they saw, but not who was speaking to them. And just like that today, we listen to everybody else but not God. God says, I'm sick of it. If you're going to call yourself my child, then you need to listen to your father. Father is not trying to tell you anything that's wrong. He's trying to tell you things that's going to what? Help you in life. The first thing the author says is see to it that you do not refuse to listen to him. Tell your neighbor, don't refuse. Don't refuse. God is speaking. God is speaking. And that's a wonderful thing because there was a time during the Exodus that God didn't speak. But he's speaking today. He's speaking right what? Now. He's speaking right now. He says, listen, don't refuse to listen who's speaking to you right what? Now. now. I'm speaking to you now. And he says, I'm giving you nuggets to help you in life, to help you to what? To know that there's a warning sign. Listen. Uh, yeah, okay. Yes. 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 This is what the Holy Spirit just downloaded into my spirit. He said that, uh, Lady McGee, we were watching Chicago Med one night. One night we were watching Chicago Med. What day does that come on? Come on. Okay, so Thursday night we watched Chicago Med. Wednesday, Wednesday night after Bible study because we recorded just so you know we went watching we're doing Bible study. It's at Bible study. We, we recorded it on, on what's it called DDR. Thanks so much. So we recorded it on DDR. So we can go back and watch it and, and move forward past all the commercials. So as we're watching it and we're, we're excited because we had left off on a part that we really wanted to see. And when we start watching it in the midst of the of the program. The weatherman interrupted. <laughs> he interrupted it because it was a storm that was going on. There was a storm that was going on, and so in the middle of the program, we thought it was still recording the what the show, but it recorded the what the warning along with the show. I am not helping anybody right now. So, so it, it recorded the what the warning. And so we we were looking at each other like, I hate this stuff. <laughs> we were so looking forward to watching the what? The show. But because there was something more present, he interrupted our normal program mm -hmm. to bring us a warning that a tornado was on the line. I want to walk so bad, but let me stand still. This is what the Lord said. He said, listen, he said, I'm the type of God that will interrupt your, your regular scheduled program of life. Not because I don't love you, but because I'm warning you about what's coming your way. Yeah. He, he said, I, I throw signals and signs to let you know that, look, you, you need to straighten up or you need to get to covering or get to a shelter. Why? Because a storm is on the way. And I will interrupt your regular scheduled program called life so I can bring you the warning so that you can get to safety and not have to die in what it is that you're dealing with. You hear this, Jeff? This is what he says. He says, I had to interrupt some stuff in your life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And the reason I interrupted it is because if I didn't warn you, you would have walked right into the storm. Yeah. He says, so, so I, I, I'm, I'm the type of God that loves you enough that I will interrupt. I will insert myself in what you're doing just so I can give you the warning. 
See, that's enough to tell them thank you. See how we don't know when to tell God thank you? Because there were some things you were doing in your life that God said, no, I had to interrupt that. I inserted myself in that. You wanted to keep on doing it, but see, now you said, oh, God, what the flip that happened? God said, I had to flip the script. I had to get you off of what you would normally do because I need you to know that I see what you don't see. Yeah. Now, in the middle of the program, he inserted himself in the middle of our program and disrupted our program to give us the warning. God said, that's what I'm doing in some of your lives right now. Yeah. Not because I don't love you, but because the road that you were headed down, I had to disrupt that. Yeah. Am I helping anybody right now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had to disrupt it. I inserted myself in that. The folks you were hanging with, I interrupted that. Yeah. The thing you were doing, I inserted myself in that. You wasn't expecting it. You you were going on about your business, but here I came. I just put I just put myself in. Lord said, I will guide you along the best path for your life. I will give you counsel to follow and heed you. That's what he says in Psalm 32 and 8. He said, I will. He said, I will put myself in your situation to help save you from yourself. Because some of us need saving from ourselves. What you wanted to do, how you wanted to do it, and who you wanted to do it with, God said, no, I had to insert myself in that. Yeah. But not only that, that, that's what he says in verse number uh, 25. Not only that, he says, look, don't refuse it, but he says this, give me, give me, um, uh, oh, help me, please. Here, give me verse 26, please. Give me verse 26. He said, oh, yeah, this is what he said. He said, whose voice did what? Sure. Come on, talk back to me. Whose voice did what? Sure. But now, say, say now. Now. He has promised and say, yet once more, he's going to do what? Sure. Not just the earth, he's going to shake this time. He said, I'm going to also shake the what? The heaven. I'm going to shake some things out of heaven that shouldn't be there too. And since a little bit of heaven is in all of us, he said, that's why I'm shaking you. Because, listen, this, this is my second point. He shook things up then, and he's shaking things up now to warn us. You say, well, God, it don't feel good because you want He said, warnings don't always feel good. See, it doesn't feel good when you're sitting in your house in the comfort, and then the storm hits your life. The rain starts going, and the wind starts blowing, and then all of a sudden, your family's all together, and then you say, Everybody got to get to the what? The safe place, to the bathroom, or get to the... Why? Because the warning is sounding. Letting you know that trouble's on the what? And when you hear about that tornado coming, or that hurricane coming, and you have to get to a safe place, it interrupts your normal activity in the day. And God says, I'm interrupting stuff right now in this, in this, in this church. I'm interrupting it. I, I interrupted your morning because you thought that you were just going to come here and just sit here. God said, no, I interrupted your long program. Mm -hmm. And I'm shaking stuff up. You know why? Because God said, sometimes I got to shake it to get your attention. Right. If I didn't shake you, you know how when, when somebody's sleeping real hard, and you're trying to wake them up because it's somewhere they need to go. And they don't seem to really want to get up in the beard. You got to really put some what? Some, some, some effort into it. So you got to really get them up. Get them up. And then they'll look at you like, oh. It's like, well, you weren't feeling a little bit of a shame. So I had to put some force into it. Oh, God said, yeah, just like you did that, I had to put a little force in your life. Because just going down the road wasn't enough. So I had to shake some things up in your life. I had to remove some stuff. I had to what? Remove some people out of your life. I had to shake things up. Why? Because when we disobey God's word, here it is. When we disobey God's word, he speaks another way to us by shaking us. See, he said, when you refuse to listen, what I have to do next is now I got to shake it. 
He said, it wasn't enough when I was speaking, you know, like I'm speaking now, and then you get distracted by other stuff. He said, that's why I got to shake. You get distracted easy. Yeah. He said, so I don't want you to get distracted, so I'm putting the shaking in, in the place of you not hearing my word. But here it is, this is my last point for today. Well, last two points there. Not only will he shake it, but he wants, he wants what's, uh, what's not shakeable to remain. Give me verse 27. This is what he says. He says, at this word, he said, my word is the word that won't shake when everything else does move. Yet once more, so let me remove those things that are what? Shaken. He said, there's some stuff in your life that I need to shake out of you. Yeah. There's some stuff in your life that I need to what? Shake out. And the reason he needs it to, to come out of you so he can put more of himself in you. If you got a bunch of junk in your life, God said, then you don't have any room for his joy. Oh, that was good. Amen. See, if you if you have a bunch of clutter in your life, then you don't have room enough for Christ. Amen. So he said, what I have to do is remove the clutter, remove the junk, so that joy and Christ can come in. He said, but if I don't shake that stuff up, you know, like when you have dust in your room and you take it outside, you got to beat. Yeah. Not that you're mad at the room, but you just don't want what's in it to keep staying in your house. Right. So God says, sometimes I have to. I got a beach. Not that I don't love you, not that I don't want you in, but there's some stuff in you I need to get out. God, I love you so much. He says, he says, listen, I'm doing this to help you, not to hurt you. See, when you used to spank your children, you would say, I'm not doing this to what? To hurt you. I'm doing this to teach you what? Discipline. So you will learn to listen to my voice. I don't care where I was, sister. I don't care where I was, bro, friend. Sister Roxanne, I don't care where I was. If I was doing something wrong, I can hear my daddy's voice. Greg, huh? <laughs> I got a case of it. Just got a case of it. You know how you can be in a mall full of people, and all of a sudden you can just hear your parents' voice. You can hear them say, don't do that. Don't go there. Anybody beside me ever, ever experienced that? Don't do that. Don't go there. Don't, don't, don't act like that. And, and then when you disobey the voice, what tends to happen? You tend to go through a bad situation. Amen. A bad situation. Why? Because you didn't listen to your parents' voice. God said, that's what's happened in some of your lives. I'm speaking, said the Lord. And you're ignoring my voice. I'm talking to you, and you're ignoring my what? My voice. He says, since you are going to ignore it, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to shake you. And what I'm shaking out of you is the stuff I need not to remain. Amen. So I'm going to get that out of you. Somebody say, God, get it out of me. God, get it out of me. Say it loud. Say, Lord, God, get it out of me. God, get it out of me. Why? Because God is trying to tell you something. Amen. God, and, and, and Brother Ripper, I was, I was, I was sitting, I was sitting uh, at the house. And uh, I said, God, you're trying to tell us something. He said, yeah. He said, you remember that song about Color Purple? God is trying to tell you something. God is trying to tell you something. And that song just kept on coming in my spirit. God's trying, and, and then real salt, real salt. I just heard it. God is trying. And if you ever watch anybody ever watch Color Purple, mm -hmm. and, and when, when a woman who was, uh, you know, she was out there real bad, she finally decided to come back to, to and she was singing in the clubs, and singing all out, and doing all kinds of stuff. But then when God got a hold of her, after he shook her, yeah. When he shook her, she left the club where she was, and she walked across the swamp. She walked across the land. She walked all the way to where her daddy was preaching in the church, and while they were singing, they could hear her singing from the swamp. Yeah. They could hear her singing. God is trying to tell me something. And, and when she when she came into the church, when she came into the presence of her father, her father opened up his arm and she just fell into her father's arm and she was still singing. God is trying.
trying to do what? God said, I'm trying to tell you something. That your soul is not supposed to be destined for him. Your soul is supposed to be destined for the Father and be with me. He said, I'm trying to tell you that you're walking through some swamp land, you're coming across some places, you're hanging out in the wrong thing, and I'm trying to what? Tell you something. And he said, I'm standing at the, I'm standing at the cross with my arms stretched wide, and all I need you to do is keep singing, God, keep telling me what you want me to hear. God is trying to tell somebody something today through social media in the sanctuary. He's telling you, you need to hear what he has to say. God is saying something to you today. He says, you're going to make it. You and your family will be just fine. Don't try and take matters into your way. Just stand and let me fight your battle. God is telling somebody something in the church. God said, what did he say? He said, you're going to make it. Somebody say, I'm going to make it. See, you think that you can't make it because what you see, what you see, you see, and what you see, you're what you see, what you see can be deceptive. It looks like you're not going to make it. It looks like you're not going to make it through. It looks like you're all by yourself. God, it just looks bad right now. God said, no, go back, go back, go back to it, go back to it. I need you to see it. Go back to it. This is what he said. He said, I'm telling you. You're going to make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't listen to what everybody else is saying. Listen to what I say. Yeah. I'm speaking to you. You're going to make it. Yeah. Somebody shout that. I'm going to make it. Yeah. But not only are you going to make it, but you and your family will be just what? Yeah. Why? Because God said it. Yeah. And that settles it. God said you're going to be fine. God said you're going to make it. He said, but he didn't warn you. He said, don't try to take matters into your what? Amen. Just stand still. And watch God work it out. Amen. Listen, God does his best work behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, go to the next one. Then I'm done. Then I'm done. Let's, let's see what he got. Let's see what else he has to say. God said this. He said, rest in me. I'm already at work in your life. I will turn around. Ooh, God. See, see, sometimes we don't know when to shout. Because God is saying this. Guess what he just told you? He said, rest in me. Somebody shout, rest in him. Why? He said, while you're trying to work it out, I've already worked it out. You trying to figure it out? What? And guess what? I'm still working. So you ain't got to try to do it. Stop trying to take matters into your own hand. Why? Why do we take matters into our own hand? Because we feel God ain't moving faster than us. So, oh God. You know, uh, uh, I know people mean well. Uh, Sister Monique, I know they mean well. A lot of times, Sister Tony, I, I know they mean well, uh, Brother Mike, when they say, uh, when, you, when you're not feeling your best, and then they'll say things like, I pray that you have a speedy recovery. That sounds real good, but that's such a false statement. Why, Pastor? Because if God ain't moving fast, I don't want to move fast. I want him to take his time and heal me the way I need to be healed and made whole the way I need to be made whole. So I don't want no speed to recover. Sometimes we want everything microwave. Get me back the way I was now. Get me back the way I need to be when now. God said, I don't always work in the now, but I'm speaking now. So sometimes I need you to really let me do what I need to do, not just for what's ailing you, but what issues that you have too. So I don't, I don't like when people say, Pastor, I pray you have a speed recovery. I just say, well, okay. I don't receive that. 
Because I don't want to be healed. I want to be made whole. When the one with the issue of blood, he didn't heal and he made a whole. So what was ailing her didn't come back. It, it was done with. Yeah. So Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, I need you to take your time. Yeah. Take your time with me. Because while you're taking your time, I'm now spending time with you. Right. Oh, that's good. Right. Yeah. See, while you're taking your time, I'm spending more what? Time with you. And as I'm spending time with you, I'm growing in you. And you are growing me to become more like you. God said, I got you. I will turn every, not just some, but what? Yeah. Every, not just this one, but yeah. bad situation in your life. I will bless you and your family. I will heal what needs to be what? Healed. He says, I got this. Amen. Just go ahead and say, God, you got it. Amen. And this is my last point with this. He says this in verse 27. He says, what I want to do is I'm going to shake this stuff up. Now, I read it in the message Bible, and this is what really blessed me. He said this, so don't turn a deaf ear to these gracious words that God's given you. If those who ignored earthly warnings didn't get away with it, what makes you think you're going to get away with it? His voice that took, that took time and shook the earth to its foundation. This time, he told us this quite plainly. He's also rocking that. One last shake from the top to the bottom, to the stem to the stern. The phrase, one last shaking, means a thorough house cleaning, getting rid of all historical and religious junk that the unshakable essence stand clear and club. He said, I'm getting rid of all that junk. He said, I'm gonna do one good final shake. I'm getting ready to do some house cleaning. Because we are the house. And he says, I'm getting ready to clean your what? House. I'm getting ready to clean your house. He says, you, you looking at me as your maid, but I'm your servant. I'm getting ready to clean your house. I'm getting ready to get rid of all the junk. And some of us have so much junk that's in the way of God bringing more into our house. That's why he says, I got to do a house clean. He didn't say do no yard sale. He said, that stuff needs to go in the trash. Mm -hmm. But see, when you do a yard sale, you bring it back in the house. <laughs> Whatever's left, you bring it where? I said, no, I'm one with yard sales. I'm not selling you this. I'm cleaning this. This is the stuff that's going on the side of the road that they can pick up and throw away. There's some sin in your life that needs to be put on the side of the street. There's some stuff in your closet a life that God says, I need to do some house cleaning about. Not spring cleaning, house cleaning, because spring gonna come and then the winter and you're gonna go buy some more stuff. Amen. He said, no, I'm cleaning this one last time and this time I'm, I'm tired of you listening to everybody else. I need you to listen to me. Amen. He says, I'm speaking now. Even in the life of Job, even in the life of Job, when Job, God gave Job over 30 chapters to talk. After God got tired of hearing what Job had to say, he said, you said enough. Mm -hmm. Now I'm speaking. He asked Job a question. He said, Job, where were you when I put the stars in the sky? Where were you when I put the mountains and the hills up? Where were you then? Since you're so bad, I love it when you read it from the message Bible, live about. He told him this. He said, man, uh, stand up. Be a man. You've been a whip leaning and, and crying out and talking about how bad your life is. He said, but I've been here the what? The whole time. He said, where were you when I was when I put the cow on the on the earth? When I put everything into place? He said, where were you? He said, you weren't even born then. He said, but you got you feel that you got the right to voice your opinion to a God who has all things in his hand. And when 
Job realized that God was only strengthening him to build his faith, he apologized. He repented. That's what God is looking out for you. He says, when you realize that you can't do this by yourself, why don't you repent? Stop trying to take matters into your what? Own hands. Just repent. Turn what it is that turns you away from God. Let me get rid of the club, says the God, says the Lord. Let me remove the, un the shakable, the unshakable, so that I can now build you on the right foundation. Is it so there's some stuff I gotta remove? But we're gonna get deeper next week. Next week we're gonna talk about uh, there's a shaking going on. There's a shaking going on. God says, I'm shaking some stuff up. And, and I don't need you to worry about all the other stuff. Just listen. Let me do what I need to do with you. Amen. Let me do what I need to do with you. To straighten you, to direct you, to correct you. Because why? I love you. I love you so much. I'm going to shake you. And we're going to talk about that. There's a shake in the world. I'm going to even tell you where I'm going to come from. I'm going to come from the book of Luke. But I ain't going to tell you the first because then you're trying to get ahead of me. <laughs> Amen. Go back and read this. Sister Rebecca, this book, bless you. When, when Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, there's a whole lot of shape going on. The devil decides to shake you and shift you like we. God says, I told the devil to go ahead and mess with you. Because of some stuff in you that I need to get out of you. You got it? As far as I'm going. But even when Jesus was on the cross, there was a shaking. The whole earth shook. The whole earth turned dark. Why? Because Jesus was shaking sin out of the universe. He was bringing it all upon himself so that he could, he could free us from the stuff that we need to be freed from. So he says, here I am today. I'm speaking, I'm speaking, I'm speaking. Will you receive what Jesus has to say to you today? Will you let him shake you? Will you listen to his voice? Will you not reject his voice or refuse to hear? Because if you do, that's why he's shaking you. That's why he's shaking you. But he says, I'm shaking you to get rid of the clutter, to get rid of the junk, to get rid of religion, so I can get you into a better relationship. Jesus name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. The doors of the church are open. They've been open for over 2,000 years. And they're open for you, 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 you who are not saved. God says, I'm shaking you. He says, I'm speaking a word to you right now that you can come and give your life to me. Don't reject me. Don't reject me today because tomorrow is not promised. Don't reject me. Hear what I'm having to say. Give me your heart. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You can come and be in the family of faith right now. The doors of the church are open. They're open. God says, I'm speaking. Is there anybody that's hearing? Anyone that's hearing God? He says, come. Come and give your life to me right now. I'm speaking. If you don't come, I'm going to keep shaking. I'm going to keep shaking until you put on the right foundation. Social media, God is speaking. Will you give him your life right now? Is there anybody in the house and pastor that's I want to give my life to Jesus Christ today. I hear him speaking. I hear him speaking. I'm not going to wait on the shaking. I hear him speaking right now. Anybody? Anybody's looking for a church home? This is the place where God wants to grow you and groom you, plant you. You can come right now. The doors are open. It's open. Yes. Do it. Do it right now. Do it. Do it right now. Right now. Is there anybody? Is there anybody? Let's 
give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Did you receive the word today? Yes. Thank you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Listen, don't reject his voice. God is speaking. Listen to what he has to say. And if you missed him, just remember that there's a shaking coming. Amen. He's going to shake all the clutter, all the junk out of your life because he wants you to be with him. Amen. 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 Happy birthday and happy anniversary to those that are celebrating birthdays in the month of May. Any birthday babies, anniversaries in the month of May? Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for all those. Also, don't forget that uh, we are still working on uh, our men's ministry. We're going to be getting back together soon. Please forgive me for my tardiness at work and late. We also want to celebrate and give congratulations to all of the class of 2022. Amen. Amen. sit in the sanctuary. These are all of the graduates, whether it's kindergarten, SR, eighth grade seniors. We thank God for all of them. Uh, we thank God for everybody that is being promoted and that are graduating and going to the next level, which God is blessing you with. Amen. Don't go without Jesus. Amen. Don't go without Jesus. So we thank you. Without any other announcements? Anything? Thank you for your prayers and your uh, concerns for Lady McGee. You good to see her still coming to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Also, uh, I know that at the House of Hope, there's a graduation that's next week, right? Next Saturday at 6 o'clock. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hopefully, um, I could be there Lady McGee. We're going to do our best to be there to celebrate. Let's give the House of Hope a hand. with us. We love you to fight for Jesus Christ and you are a part of our family. So if you ever need me, if you ever need me, I know I work a lot of hours, but God will grace me soon to be able to do some things and come out and be with you on some nights. Amen. Amen. Well, it's giving time. Amen. Amen. We praise God that we have the opportunity to give for those who would like to give. If you would like to give, the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. He loves a cheerful giver. And so if you would like to give, uh, you're in the house. There's an envelope you can ask for. And they'll be so gracious to give you one. If you need an envelope, just lift up your hand. They'll bless you with it. Uh, there's some to my left that needs an envelope. Praise the Lord. For those of you that say, Pastor, I didn't bring cash, but I do have it on my card. I want to bless the ministry. I want to bless God. I want to give my tithes. I want to give my offer. Well, we have. PayPal on our website. You can go to www.mountmarad.ms.org. You can download that and go to PayPal. And you can use your debit card, your credit card, whatever God wants you to use. And you can give from there also. Also, you say, well, Pastor, I don't want to do the website. I don't trust that. Well, you can also download on your phone the Giveify app. The Mount Moriah Giveify app. You can download the Giveify app on your phone, on your social media device, and make sure that it says Mount Moriah, Winona, Mississippi. Make sure it says Mount Moriah, Winona, Mississippi. You can download the Giveify app, put it on your phone, you can give. It keeps up a total for you, so you don't have to ask for it. It gives it right there for you, just so you know what you're giving. Amen. So you can pull out your devices right now. You can give your tithes and offering right now. However God wants you to give. Don't give from your head. Give from your heart because you can talk yourself out of giving. Amen. For those of you that are giving, write your checks or your money order or your cash. Make sure you put it in the envelope. You can put your tithes, offering, building fund. Or if you want to give to the youth ministry, pastor's aid ministry, whatever part of the ministry you want to give. You can write it on the envelope. Amen. And God will continue to 
bless you. He says, give, give. Bring all your tithes and offering into his storehouse so there will be meat or more that we're able to do for others that we need to do in the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bless God. You can stand at this time.